Hello everyone and welcome back to Edge of Normal Workshop. Today we're going to be talking about our hydraulic forging press, uh, more specifically the foot pedal control we have set up on ours. Um, we've had a lot of people ask lately uh, to get a better look, a closer look at how we have that set up. Um, so this video is going to focus on our foot control. Um, we're going to go over uh, things we had to change on the machine um, and how we had and the specifics of how we have our setup um, and things that we had to change along the way on our setup to get it to work uh, smoother. Um, if you haven't seen our uh, first video on our hydraulic forging press, that gives a very general overview of our press and uh, and some dies we've made for it. And uh, I suggest that. You go uh, check that out if you're interested interested in the Coal Iron Works 12 ton forging press. Um, let's head over to the press and uh, get looking at this foot control. All right, we're over here at our hydraulic forging press. Uh, like I said just a minute ago, um, this is a 12 ton press from Coal Iron Works over in Indiana. Um, it is a great press and I highly recommend it. I can't say enough positive things about it. Um, so I'm gonna get this pulled out away from the wall um, so we can get, in, get underneath it and start looking at this uh, foot pedal. All right, so now we're down here at the power unit of the press. Um, we have ours mounted on the bottom of the cart so that we could get the uh, valve control closer to the ground um, so that we could have shorter linkages. And uh, it also let us have a big work surface on the back of our press cart that uh, is nice to have a little more, uh, little more workbench sometimes. Um, so what we have down here are a couple of turnbuckles, um, this block that I, uh, put together, it has a set screw on one side and it's got these two, um, eye bolts on the ends. Uh, what this lets us do is connect, um, our linkage to the foot control, um, and the return spring, because this valve only, uh, it'll return to um, neutral on its own, but it won't lift the, um, won't lift the ram. Uh, you have to pull up on it. So we have our return spring set up so that there's constant pressure on the valve control. Um, so that it always it always returns up. Um, now, I used the turnbuckles so that we could have some adjustability uh, while setting it up, um, fine tuning it as we're using it. Um, but then I put a couple of uh, stop nuts on them so that once we get it dialed in, we could leave it where it's at. So here's a closer look. Um, so right now it's in the neutral position and we have a, uh, we have a lever that um, engages the foot pedal in the neutral position so that it can stay there so we can walk away from the press, go back to the forge, um, get another heat uh, while it's still running. Um, if we didn't have this lever right here, um, it, because of our return spring system, it would constantly be pulling up and that's not good for the, uh, it, that's not good for the, the whole system. Um, so when I disengage that lever, um, you'll see it automatically returns to the, um, the up position, which lifts the ram. Um, when I press down on the foot pedal, um, 
it, the ram goes down. Uh, so that's um, that's a better look at how that part is set up. Um, now we'll look at how the pedal is connected to everything, um, and then we'll see it in action. All right, so this is the foot pedal. Um, as you can see up here, this is the uh, this is the turnbuckle that connects to the control lever, um, and this was the um, neutral lever that I was talking about. Because of the way this valve is um, constructed, we needed to have this so that we could um, leave the machine running as we go back to the forge um, to get another heat. Um, so when we gently push down on the pedal, this is still in neutral, um, and I don't have the machine turned on right now be, uh, just for uh, volume so you can hear me talking. Um, but th this is still in neutral, it just, you've pressed down enough to disengage that, um, that neutral bar. So, um, there's a little bit of, I mean, there's, it's a comfortable amount of travel, um, and because of the way that block that connects everything to the control rod is set up, um, you can adjust how much travel you have, um, so this is at, so that is actually um, as far as the lever goes on the valve. Um, and then we release and that is as far up as the lever goes on the valve. So it's, we have it dialed in to have a very short amount of travel, but this is such a nice press, we can, um, we still have a, a ton of control with that short amount of travel. All right, so now I'm gonna show you all the parts working together in action with the press on um, so you can get a good sense of how all they work, how all the parts work together and, uh, and just how effective this uh, pedal system is. So I hope that this uh, video has been helpful to some, um, helps give a better look at how we have our press set up. Um, I think that this is an, an extremely effective way to set up the foot control um, so that you can use both hands while you're forging, um, which I know I, uh, I appreciate. Um, I. If you're looking for a hydraulic forging press, I highly recommend checking out Coal Ironworks. Um, the 12 ton press is extremely, uh, extremely reliable. It does way more than you'd expect 12 tons to do. I know I was shocked by it. Um, and uh, super high quality, great customer service. And I'm just, just with the, put this out there, they're not paying me to say anything about them. Um, I just, I, I strongly, uh, strongly believe in their product and I think that they're a, a great company to work with. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I hope it helps somebody um, that has this machine um, and they're looking to set something up like this or, uh, or you're considering purchasing a machine. Um, yeah, so I, I hope it helps. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you liked the video, uh, click the like button and, uh, and feel free to subscribe to keep up with everything that we're doing. Thanks.